Hello guys, I received an Akamishi 682ZX uh, to replace a playback head in it. So this one I was fixing before and as you remember we did adjust frequency response because uh, playback head uh, had minus 4 decibel uh, to the normal uh, response on the 10 kilohertz. So now I have this Nakamichi. 482Z, which I already tested, and it has perfect heads with low wear. And I will be replacing heads, uh, swapping it from this Nakamichi. Uh, I did the same with my deck, and it did very well, as you've seen measurements and uh, hear sound from my Nakamichi 680. Uh, my understanding is that 400 series has a lower wear than 600 series because 600 was much more expensive and people who were buying them were using them much more frequently. So I'm already started and I pull it up connectors. I still need to pull up wires. I'm already in the assembled boards. So I the only thing left like to disconnect tape transport from the lower screws and then I will be pulling it out and I will show you it's, it's very easy uh, to swap uh, you see uh, this head uh, it's held only by this uh, metal screw so and it's uh, not screw it's pin and it gets inserts and turns by 90 degrees and head will be released and then I will like, desolder wires, solder new head, and install it back. So all in all, uh, if you know what you're doing, it's not a big amount of work, but uh, it's required very precise uh, tuning afterwards. Okay, let me see what I can do with it. See you when I will pull up the transport. Hey guys, and here I'm opening a 482Z and I found a couple interesting things which I haven't seen before. So like, uh, you might see like eight Dolby chips here, uh, for here and for here, uh, to make sure that it can like uh, uh, record and play at the same time. It's a three head deck and it has uh, tape monitoring in it. So that's, uh, that we're interested in, it goes here. But a record and rise head goes to this small board here. And this board is a bias generator, as you may see. So it's filtering coils and uh, isolating capacitors. And here is the generator itself. Interesting design, I've never seen this before. Okay. Now I will have to remove the state transfers. It's already been serviced, so you see it's not original belt here. It's a thin one. Uh, looks to be of a good quality. Well, let me see. See you in the next parts. Hey guys, and finally I disassembled 481, well, 482ZX. And like, uh, it took twice more time because it was in competent assembly, uh, which tied all wires across multiple uh, metal pieces because they assembled not in the order. And as a result, we have a little bit more time to work with this. So here I just pulled up the pin. So you may see the pin, it just sits here and holds the head and here is the head assembly so i will just disconnect these wires right and work with the other tape transport which i've already disassembled here to swap the heads and put them back so when i will disconnect both of them i will make a part on the microscope so we would be able to see the differences all right this one so this deck is recording to 25 kilohertz. That's good. Let's make sure that the other one will see you. Bye. Hey guys, and here is uh, 
682 head under the microscope, I would say that it has less wear than the other one. Uh, I will show you the other one in a moment. But for some reason, this head has a slope. I just cleaned it like, uh, to see better. And this head has a slope and it can play properly 10 kilogears for some reason. I'm not sure why. Gap is still good, a little bit maybe opened on the lower part here. Trying to do my best. I just was trying to see with the higher magnification. So and that's the head from the 482. You see, it's worn a little bit more, but it's worn flat. Okay. And I cannot see gap either here in the middle of the screen. Very, very thin gap. Interesting. But this one has a very flat and even veer. Where see so this made part which is not shining is worn okay on the screen is about two and a half centimeters and on this head here is about two centimeters worn Interesting. I would say even less, I would say like one and a half centimeter. But you see the wear not even for some reason. So you see. I'm doing my best to understand like uh, what is driving the loss of high frequencies in this head. So, and if you will see, uh, the 682 head has a yellow dot, and 680 had yellow dots, so they've been like a uh, higher grade, so they've been selecting these heads. And this head, oh yeah, it has yellow dot. I saw like, I saw this red mark, but it has yellow dot either. So. For me, this looks like two very similar heads. And I was replacing uh, the same on the Nakamichi 680, and I get a really great results. So after replacement, my deck plays frequency response like, like a new. So, okay, let me replace, as you see, they have a different base. 682 has casted base, and 482 has just uh, simple base. I have to unscrew and replace them because this will be more sturdy. Okay, right. see you in the next parts. A little bit more light, so you will see it a little bit better. So technically, when you look at them, you wouldn't be able to see significant difference. But when they play in the deck, they actually are. Okay, see you soon. And hello again. So, replaced head has been installed for 682 tape transport. So, it sits like that. You would need to adjust it because we attached it. Uh, let me assemble the second tape transport. Then we will put them back and let's see how they will work. See you soon. Hey guys, when I received this 482, I've seen that head has been screwed, so I fixed the record playback head, but I was not able to make it fully rise, but now you may see reason. So as you may see, right here, so it sits too high, so the guide needs to sit lower, and that's where the tape doesn't go through the middle 
of the rice head. So I'm already soldered the playback head, so now I will adjust this before assembling, just to not return to this back again. Luckily I just remember it, so let me fix it. As you see, this has like uh, these pins, we just hold an uh, arm on the shaft, so I would have to pull them a little bit lower. Hi, right, see you soon. Okay guys, and here is the second tape transfer being assembled. Guide restored, heads on the place. Let's see how this will perform. See you soon. Okay guys, I'm assembled uh, post tape transfers. I'm already measured it for 82. It lost four decibel as it was with this deck. And now this deck, I remove its uh, frequency correction. And you see I'm 15 kilohertz. It plays really nice. It is good levels. So left right channel a little bit different, but it was like just a little bit better. Yeah. That's what we have. <coughs> Excuse me. So now on 15 kilohertz is plays well. Let's see 18. Eighteen kilohertz, minus two decibel. To what we had, it still still shows level. Eighteen kilohertz. DR2 frequency response tape with a very good head. Perfect. I'm already tuning the head, so you see I removed the door from here and adjusted heat and azimut. So good. I'm happy. I believe owner will be even more happy. Now I will have to check all params for this deck, uh, uh, make sure that it still records all tape types well, and so on, and complete assembling. And I hope owner would be extremely happy about it. And we will have to work on the other deck to correct frequency response and make it running. See you soon. Bye. Okay guys, I'm checking calibration, so type 1 tape, let's see how it will perform, it's calibrating, done, now let's record 400 hertz, I'm recording, so source, Tape. Uh, reduce my channel a little bit. Oh, we, we record an internal tone. Okay. And now 15 kilohertz. Okay. You may see here, I may make it bigger. So, source tape. Source tape calibrated well. I removed all frequency correction circuitry, so now it works well. Next, let's check. Uh, let's check um, this tape. How it will calibrate? Let's run this quickly. Set memory and the twenty the sex tape and calibration. Okay, it's adjusted level. I need a few hertz motor. Adjusted as and done. Now recording four hundred gears. Uh, source tape. Okay, one channel, one decibel. It's it's minimal. And now 15 kilohertz. Yeah, we need to adjust left channel, reduce bias, 
Oh, increase bias. Okay. Now, see, so step perfect results. Good. Now, let's do metal tip. And metal, I will use TTKMA. So with good heads it's quick and easy. I did all fixes with this deck before, so now it works pretty well. Switching to metal tape, calibration, increase it level a little bit. Okay, good. Found azimuth. Done. Quick and easy. 400 gears. Source. Half a decibel, perfect. 15 kilohertz. Wow, now we have <laughs> reduced a little bit. Okay, increasing by so it's maximum of the bias, you see, in this channel. So, that's what we have source tape. This is tape. Wow, perfect. Nice deck. Now I love it. Now it's real record and play with the ball. Okay. Everything works. Ready to assemble. See you in the next part. Bye-bye.